Welcome! Last Saturday I shared a very early morning <laughs> um, powerful message on the topic of grandparenting and parenting. I actually addressed a question that was left to me on a YouTube video where I shared my recent purchases. I'm not sure what prompted this question on that particular video, but perhaps I was talking about grandparenting, which doesn't wouldn't surprise me or probably most people that know me. I will insert this question here, an image of it, but I addressed the question to the best that I could. And I also, it, it kind of prompted and led me into a really strong, just thought-provoking message that day, that early morning on showing up in our grandchildren's lives in the early stages, in the early years, when we still have that um, availability before they, they pull away. And I talk about children pulling away. As you know, my husband Paul and I have raised five beautiful daughters. They are all grown adults, and there's a lot of takeaways from raising five children, as you can imagine. For those of you that are parenting, you know that there is a lot. <sighs> parenting entails a lot, and my message last Saturday was powerful. I'm not going to go into more detail. I'll let you listen to it. I also took a poll asking you, my viewers, or my Instagram stories viewers, if they wanted me to save that message in a YouTube video. And I will insert the results here. It was, I believe, what, 93% of those that took advantage of that poll shared that they did want me to um, save it here and, and have it for you to reference back to. So if the video speaks to you, I encourage you to put that information somewhere that you want to revisit this video because, like I always say, you won't remember. So have a library where you save videos maybe on different topics. That's what I do so that I can refer back to them when I get time or when I feel that I need it. This also prompted me to host a workshop um, on parenting, to, to host a class as I've been reached out to many times with the request of, of, of doing a workshop on the topic of parenting. And I actually have had a couple viewers leave an email on the Hensel Coaching and Consulting email with their request. This was after me prompting them to share what it is they would be looking for in me hosting or Paul and I hosting a workshop where we talk about parenting. Now on the workshop and replay tab, there are a couple, I believe, um, workshops already on parenting, but one of those, I think it's called Parenting with Purpose, I was kind of like a, a guest speaker, I guess you could say. I didn't conduct that. One of the other coaches that at the time was part of Hensel Coaching and Consulting conducted that workshop. And while it's a fantastic workshop, in fact, I will I will have a, a discount code to take advantage of that at a, at a very reasonable price if you'd like. I'll have that code in the description box below. But I didn't facilitate that. I just supported the coach that conducted that. But I do believe it's a great one and I highly recommend that workshop. So I'd love for you to have it today at a discount. I will also have a video library in the description box below of other YouTube videos where I talk about parenting and hopefully you can gain something from those from the messages I share there. But because it has been requested, I am I am eager to help in this area because I know how taxing um, it can be <laughs> to parent and parent well. So that being said, I am hosting an upcoming parenting workshop. This will be a two-part series. The first video will be pre-recorded. Well, 
where I will address several topics that have been requested from people, viewers like you that are parenting, they're in the thick of it, have sent me topics of requests that they would like me to speak on. So a video will be pre-recorded where I address those topics in that video will go to all people registered by the end of the year, December 31st. On January 1st of 2025, that pre-recorded video will be sent to all of you who registered. The following Sunday will be a second video and that will be a live Q&A that I will be hosting on Sunday, January 5th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. That will be a video. It will be recorded, but it's also live. So you will join me live if you can attend and I can expand on anything that I covered in the initial video that you got the Wednesday prior on the first of the year. I won't go into any more detail here in this video because I will be sharing more in upcoming videos, but in the description box below is a link where you can route to the page to get registered and read more about what I'm going to cover in that two-part series, Parenting Workshop on Raising confident children in uncertain times, right? In uncertain times. I will also talk briefly about grandparenting because it really is a layer off of parenting. But if you'd like to hear what I plan to cover in that workshop, please tap the link in the description box, take a look at it, and be sure to get registered before registration close the last day of the year, December 31st. So let's dive into what I shared last Saturday in my powerful message on Instagram stories. Sitting in here, I've already done my stretching and my posture and breath work. I did do that because I have the lights down and I, I need to wake up doing that. Spent time in the Lord with the Lord, um, which I still have to wrap up some loose ends um, with that. Um, but I'm doing my admin work in here, relaxing with coffee by my space heater instead of doing it as part of my workout because I'm just suffering. <laughs> I'm just suffering. But I've said a lot of affirmations and um, the Lord has lifted me and, you know, I'm going to push through and He's got me, and I, I trust the process. It's all going to take place. Um, but <laughs> where am I going? I'm really here for a purpose. I'm right, I'm right now just commenting on yesterday's comments that were left on my YouTube video, Mega Empties. I think this is the last one. So this is the last one that I have to... Well, let me see if any are being held, because YouTube will hold comments if... YouTube feels that there's hate or <laughs> um, negativity, troll type behavior. YouTube will hold it and it'll, it will allow me to read it and approve it. And sometimes randomly, a, a, a regular, just normal comment will be in there. Like, I'll be like, I don't even know why they're holding that, but whatever. I don't, I don't get other plat. I don't make the rules with these platforms. Um... So I just thought I would share on this one because you may be interested. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. If not, take it with a grain of salt. She says, hi, Tracy. Do you consider yourself to be a needy grandparent or do the kids that have the children rely on you a lot for child care? So I'll read my reply. Hello. I don't know what a needy grandparent is. <laughs> I've never heard of this term, so unfortunately, I don't have an answer to that question. One thing about me is if I don't understand something, I don't take the time to respond to it because I feel like I could be wasting my time and I could be wasting their time because if I answer how I perceive it, it may not be what they're asking. <laughs> so I don't want to waste anyone's time. Um, so I can't answer that because I don't know what a needy grandparent is. 
I, I would need that explained to be able to answer that question. I proceed. My daughters who have children use a variety of child care services. My grandchildren all go to daycare because both of those daughters work. Kirsten works full time. McKenna recently went to part time. So McKenna goes into the office three days per week and then she's home two days. She has a beautiful split because she works Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and she gets Tuesday, Thursday off. But I will share this with her. If I am not available on the Friday that I watch Mac or the other grandma, Bobby's um, stepmom, and we need a different day, she has that flexibility. She could work a Monday, Tuesday, Friday. She can she can do whatever she wants, but she works three days in the office and then she has two days off. Kirsten works <clears throat> full-time, but has a lot of flexibility with her job. She works from home most often. And again, um, McKenna is, she has an accounting degree. She works at an accounting firm. Kirsten works for the state for, she's a social worker. She works for Child Protective Services. She protects our children. Um, so, okay, my grandchildren all go to daycare and they go to the same daycare, which is an in-home daycare, because both of those daughters works. The grandkids also get child care from the grandparents on their father's side. So Tim's parents actually have June and Marin every Monday. And then Paul and I, we are now on a rotation of every other Friday, we have Mac. We no longer have June and Marin because a space came available at the in-home daycare that they go to. And Kirsten really couldn't pass it up with her job role because she just got a new job still working for the state, but a different role and it may require her to go out on assignment. Um, they used to call it out on the field, but I guess that term, you know, they have, there's all these terms that get revised for various reasons, but I just say out on assignment. That's what I always call it. Um, so she really couldn't pass up that spot because she didn't want to lose it. So we technically don't have June and Marin on a formal basis like we did and now we have every other Friday. I also added in here, I still work full time, so my availability is limited, but I am eager and love to help when possible. Um, unlike the other grandparents where they um, either don't work or they are done working, meaning they are already retired and have maybe more flexibility. I, I say that loosely because I believe no matter what season you're in, <laughs> we're stretched. <laughs> <laughs> we're stretched. I'll be stretched when I'm reti when I'm retired, and and I welcome it um, because I just like to keep busy and do things. Um, so it's been really nice now going every other Friday because I tend to work the whole weekend on Friday on the weeks that I watch the kids because I just can't get anything done work related on the days that I have the kids, and I. And I used to try at the beginning of being a grandparent, and I found I was stressed. Even though I don't wear my stress on my sleeve, internally I was stressed, and I thought that's no way to be. So I just said, I just have to take the day off. I mean, I do pepper in. I limit things a little bit here and there. But I would say on a typical Friday that I have the grandkids, I maybe put in about an hour of work related work. So, um, it, so it trickles into the weekend, like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> and I will have more work this morning for my, for my admin work for the moving parts because I couldn't do anything yesterday. So it's like a double, almost like double the load, if that makes sense, but that's okay. Um, because I love this season. I, I would not want to miss out on it. I feel so blessed and grateful that with what I do for a living, that I have that freedom and flexibility. And then we help out all the time. So for example, with Kirsten's schedule, 
June June goes to preschool three days per week, and sometimes we need to pick, we pick her up and take her to daycare. I'm getting hot with my heater, which is a beautiful thing. You won't hear me complain. <laughs> you won't hear me complain. Let's get a sip. I'm just struggling, you guys. It's been an exhausting week with the funeral and all the family in, but loved it too. Um, what else was I going to say? Let me let me process. You can do this. You can wake up and do this, Trace. Oh, I say we because Paul retired. <laughs> yes. It's a I mean, can you imagine? He is 56 years old and he retired in June after he has 36 years working for this, the corporation that he worked for for 36 years. But um, his co-op year, they eventually took that out of like his start date. So he retired with 35 years working in manufacturing for a corporation and he's done and he retired and celebrate that win but he has had his toes <laughs> in something since about 2016 and um, now it's full throttle so he's an entrepreneur now and that takes a lot of his time I mean there's it's every day he has stuff but he has a partner who he's been da that that partner has done this business his whole entire life. Um, Paul just came on board and kind of dabbled a little bit starting in like 2016. And now, now they've merged the, the, the business into um, a partnership. So they, they now own it half and half. So that will, um, that will be, his his adventure it's and it's been ongoing for the last you know yeah it's just it's going great <laughs> it's going great that will keep him busy and um, a lot of moving parts with that even currently right now keeping him occupied but that is why I say we so we are very present we are very hands-on grandparents and we love to help our kids and we'll do anything to do it I will jockey my schedule wherever I can. I don't cancel clients or anything, but there's times where if Paul is here and he's available and let's say Kirsten, because Kirsten and Tim live <laughs> two miles from us, um, they can utilize us in a pinch. And um, if, if it works and Paul is here and I have a client or a couple of clients, we'll, we'll be like, yep, bring them. Yep, we got this. I just, I, ha I have a client, you know, so I have a couple clients. Um, but, you know, I always say dad's got it. So yeah, we will, we do, we do anything and everything that we can for our kids. And it's not because we need to, we feel pressured to, we 100% want to, love to, and it's just a season that we absolutely just love and cherish. So just thought I would share that. I will share that um, at the funeral, I was talking to a couple family members who are in our season of grandparenting. Um, and they're a little bit newer grandparents. We, you know, they don't have, their their grandchildren are a little bit younger. So they're, this is a very new to them. And they are, these are still working women. And they are trying to kind of do what we do, where they have like one day a week. And they were, these women were telling me how, oh my gosh, I thought I could like juggle working and taking care of my grandchild. And it's, I'm not getting anything done. It's just, I can't, I can't. And I said, I know I had that. I had those big lofty goals too. <laughs> and nope, <laughs> don't get much done. So but I mean, I also do family dinner on Fridays, so it's a lot. So if you're in that season, you are a grandmother and you are trying to help your children and you want that time with your grandkids, here's something that I will tell you. I know this very well. I've raised five. So I think raising five children bears a little bit of weight <laughs> um, or a lot of weight. 
there comes a point where you are no longer important. You are, but you won't, it won't show that you are important in your children's lives. Same with grandparenting. When they're little, you are their world and you will feel it. You will know I'm your world. I know I'm their world. Just like my girls, I knew I was their world when they were little. They get to an age and now it's much earlier because of technology and the need that not kids, but parents have to grow their kids up too fast by giving them all these things that that they could just hold off because the sooner the earlier you give it to them the earlier they're going to no longer want you part of their world <laughs> i could do a whole mm, on that one but i've also been guilty So it's much earlier where they kind of pull away from mom, dad, and grandparents because now their peers become their world. And you are still their world. You just won't feel it. You won't see it. You won't recognize it. You got to be careful. It can play little mind games with you. I know some of you are shaking your head, speaking your language, saying I'm in the thick of that. So for me, because I know that, because I know that is the sad reality, I don't want to miss these years. I don't want to wait until I'm retired to be super present in my grandchildren's lives because this is where the core relationship is formed and that deep love and connection. I just got goosebumps saying that. That deep love and connection that they have so you're building that foundation right now when they're little and you are their world. When we were at the funeral home, I had so many people come up to me and say, oh my gosh, are you like June's world? <laughs> and I said, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> in a lot of ways, yes. I mean, I had to, she wanted me to hold her like the whole, like the whole first hour um, and not put her down. I had high heels on. But she feels so much comfort with her Gigi. Like she feels safe. She feels comfort. And she needed that because she was in a funeral home and there's a, a do I dare say, dead body in, in this box. How, how confusing for a three-year-old. And all these people. So she just wanted me. Like she just clung. Like, And I had to hold her. I couldn't put her down. My back was in pain and I would have wore flats. <laughs> <laughs> had I known. But I loved that people actually came up to me and said, Oh my gosh, are you like her world? And I and I it's so beautiful to say, Yeah, you know, I really am. You know, we are her world. Um, and we want to be their world because before you know it, we won't be. We will be, but we won't be. And I know that and I don't fight it because I know it's the sad reality. But because that relationship was so strong in those initial formative years when they go through their season where they step away because you're no longer important it's all about my peers they don't want to hang out with you they want to hang out with their friends don't fight it it's just a season don't be little don't 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 say just let them love them and let them it will resurface. It will come back. Why are we so close to all of our daughters? Because in those early years, we formed that foundation. Then we were no longer their favorite people. We were like, losers, <laughs> losers. Let me just tell you off. <laughs> But we trusted the process and it circled back. And now we are their world, our kids' world. Now they've always been our world. That never changed. But there comes a pocket. And again, it starts really early and it goes a long time. The majority of the years that you have your children in your home, you will not be the most important thing. You will take the back seat, not in their core but they aren't going to let you know that. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
cannot tell you a compliment. They, you'll get, well, Mother's Day, yeah, you'll get a card and it'll be all the mushies. Maybe Christmas and your birthday if you're lucky. Just Mother's Day typically is about the only one I got. <laughs> Um, that's why we cry when we read those cards. That's why I have a box up there that they're all stored in because I it, 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 I needed the reminder that, yes, you do love me. <laughs> I can prove it with the Mother's Day card. But they circled back. They circled back. I'm seeing a significant change with Chloe because six months ago, I was still like the enemy. <laughs> now she's moved out. She loves me. She wants to hang out with me. Hey, Mom, you want to go to Target? Hey, what are you doing? You can just come over to my apartment and hang out. It's like, oh, now I'm your friend? <laughs> I love it. But you just embrace it. Don't fight the system. It is what it is. And we as parents, we create a lot of that, especially the earlier that it's starting because we're already giving them the technology. We're already giving them all these tools that just makes them separate from us. And then you complain about it in coaching with me? <laughs> but your eight-year-old has her cell phone and you're complaining to me? You created this? Yeah. If you want to hold on to that as long as you can, avoid pushing your children or allowing them to grow up faster than what they need to. Teach them patience, right? Everyone needs it now, and we do it as, as adults. That's not the greatest example for our children, and you're creating a lot of that pulling away. Wow, this is going to have to be saved for a YouTube video. Let me know, right, somewhere in here. I'll put a box if I remember by the end of this, because I'm struggling. I am feeling a little better, guys. But, yes, okay, they circle back grandchildren will do the same thing. You don't want to miss those early years. So if you're still working, don't let that be your excuse. Make it happen. I mean, I'm grinding it out. I'm grinding it out to make that happen because the most important thing is to make the most important thing the most important thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In closing, it's worth it. It's worth it to grind. It's worth it to figure out how, how to make the most important thing the most important thing. It's so important to not miss these years. If you miss these years, don't be so hardcore but hurt later in life that your grandchildren aren't close to you. I share this. I witness this. My children have three sets of grandparents. And I can tell you that the ones that were involved with our girls in their early years are the grandparents that they still adore. I mean, I just got goosebumps. Adore. They adore those grandparents because those grandparents showed up in their life in the early years. Sadly, they lost one of their grandparents at a very young age. And he was incredible. He was just incredible. And they miss him so dearly because he was so present in their life when they were little. Pips was only two. Deer hunting, deer hunting accident fell out of his tree stand. I'll never forget that day. October, never forget that day. What a loss for everyone. But the grandparents, again, they had three sets that weren't present in their life in their early years and had all the excuses in the book of I'm still working, da 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 da. There's, there's really not a relationship there. I mean, yeah, you're my grandparents, but I don't even really know you and you don't really even know me, right? You have to make it happen. I have two daughters who live out of state. And while both of them intend to be mothers, God willing, I know at least one of the daughters will never come home. And and I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't wish it on her. 
She's right where she needs to be. Um, unfortunately, if she marries the gentleman that she's with, which I believe she will, um, his family is there. So I, I'm so I'm so grateful for that. Oh, I couldn't imagine not having either of the sides of grandparents. Um, somehow, I I will. I will figure this out. <laughs> I will figure this out. Those grandchildren are going to know me and they are going to know Poppy. I will freaking figure it out. I keep telling <laughs> my one daughter, Haley, you better start freaking, you need an account that you're just putting in the Poppy and Gigi account because you're flying us out here monthly. <laughs> you're, you're covering that. <laughs> I always, she laughs. She's like, no, mom, you know, I, I'll help you guys, you know, so you can come out often. But I've told her, we are going to be present in your, in your children's lives when you have them. Like, it's happening. So fig we've got to figure this out. We've got to start a fund or <laughs> get us a place, maybe, you know, the in-law house. I don't know. The other, the bonus, though too. That is so important to me. So important to me. And I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out when that time comes. Is that the grandkids, they all know each other. They all know each other. The cousins all know each other. And they are together all the time. Because that's, you know, if you look at the Gen X the, the the Gen X, my generation, and the baby boomer generation. We grew up playing with our cousins. We grew up at the grandparents' house. We grew up playing with our cousins. We have such fond memories of that. I want that for my kids. I want that for my grandchildren. So I am the driving force. I'm the family glue that makes that happen. The Friday family dinners, the annual traditions um, are annual fall dinner and pumpkin carving night or day, which is typically on a Sunday, and it was supposed to be on Sunday, but because we had out-of-town guests in that had kids, we're like, let's do it on Friday. Let's, let's just do it on Friday. So it was supposed to be on Sunday. It got moved to yesterday. That is an annual tradition. You build these traditions because it gets those grandchildren together with their cousins so that they can constantly be together and form those memories and those relationships. I mean, Mac and June in Marin, just, they squeal with delight when they see each other. When one walks into the house, they squeal with delight. This doesn't happen by chance, and you're not the victim. Oh, well, this must be nice, Tracy. I wish I had that. If you don't, it's because you're not making it happen. The most important thing is to make the most important thing the most important thing. You figure it out. Why this is happening, it isn't by chance. It isn't luck. It is grit, grind, communication, being on top of my calendar, being open to my kids. What's on your calendar Let's look six months from now. When are we having our annual this? When are we having our annual that? To keep those relationships cultivated. That is so important to me that these grandkids grow up knowing their cousins. And again, we'll have out-of-state grandchildren. These kids will have out-of-state cousins. I think I got cut off. Cousins. We will figure this out. I will figure this out because it is the most important thing. When you want something bad enough, you make it happen. You may think you want something bad enough, but that's just that's just blowing smoke. That's just verbal. I've heard I've I've heard this my whole life with people, and I hear it in coaching. You want it through your verbal, but you don't take the necessary steps to make it happen. It comes with severe will, discipline, 
organization communication because it's the most important thing and we will go after the most important thing. Have you ever had an item on eBay or something that you're watching and this it's going to close and you're just on it or those tickets are going live in five minutes and you're just sitting there on it? It's because in that moment, that's the most important thing. And don't judge that. That's fine. We're all gonna, going to do that when we have to go after something that's time sensitive. But what I'm sharing with you today, this needs to be a YouTube video. Yep, we need to save this. What I'm sharing with you today is time sensitive. I just walked you through how it is time sensitive it's time sensitive in that you have to build that core foundation with your grandchildren in those early, early years. I mean, coming out of the womb. You have to build that. Make it happen. If they're out of state, figure it out. I have a client. She's a perfect example, Cheryl, if you're watching, and she works with Paul too. Um, but she's a perfect example. She's in one state. Her grandchildren are in another state. She's made it happen. She's made it happen. It did, it's not happening by chance. She's making it happen. This is time sensitive because then in that, that season is very, very short and very, very fast. All of a sudden, you're not important anymore. <laughs> Just sit back, Grandma and Grandma. I got a life now. I mean, I love you, but I got a life now. Parents, you're going to get the same thing. Paul and I went through it. Thankfully, we, we didn't judge it. We didn't, we didn't force it. We didn't push it. We, couldn't, we weren't going to exasperate ourselves trying to earn or make sure we're still accepted and loved. We just trusted the process. They'll come back. They'll come around. You know, you know they'll come around. And then they do. And then they come around. And then they want to be with you. They want to spend time with you. They talk to you daily. I mean, I talk to my girls not all of them, but Kirsten and McKenna, daily, daily. We all talk daily. Paul, not only does Paul talk to Tim and Bobby and even Jack every day, it's pretty much, oh, Carly, she's going to sleep another hour. She's heading back to North Carolina today, and she's like, I got to get out of here because I got to deal with those mountains. <laughs> I'm going to get out there and get out early. But she just I just saw a text pop up that she's going to sleep another hour because she was going to get up at 6. Um, and I wanted to say my goodbyes to her. But, yeah, he talks to them not just daily, but like all freaking day. Like every time I look, he's, he's in a texting thread. And I'll look and I'll see it's Tim and Bobby. <sighs> a lot of banter, fun banter. But they come back. So you got to cultivate it early because it's time sensitive. So I got to stop. I still have a workout to get in, you guys. I don't even know what time it is. Let me put it in here. All right. Oh, before I wrap up, I do want to say thank you to the person who left the message eight hours ago on my Mega Empties video. Um, I got a lot of great replies on there. I didn't watch that, so I don't know. But a lot of people were saying it was just nice to like get housework done and just kind of sit in a room like I'm their girlfriend. So if you haven't checked out the video, I'll put a link in here. You can watch it today. But um, thank you to this person because look what it prompted. Um, and maybe, who knows, maybe in what I shared today, it answers her question about whatever a needy grandparent is. Um, okay, wow. Oh, okay, Trace, you, you do hard things. Get her done. Be methodical trust the process. Be obedient. Be a person of your word, Trace. Be a person of your word. Got to do these. Yeah. Get the job done. Before I leave you, just kind of a push. We have an annual cookie baking day. So kind of like we do the annual dinner and um, pumpkin carving or painting, whatever. Pick your poison. Um, we have an annual cookie baking day. That day is scheduled months in advance. In fact, I still have the email thread because sometimes I have to, it's better to email because we text so much with the kids that like it can get lost. And I always pretty much just go to Kirsten and McKenna 
when we are planning annual um, traditions. I don't know why that's happening, (laughs) those balloons, because they're the ones with kids. So, and then we're also working around Tim's daughter, Kaylee, our bonus granddaughter, who is 14 and now in high school. It's just incredible. She's been in our life since the age of two. Um, But we always schedule our traditions like that on the weekends that Kirsten and Tim have Kaylee. Um, That is a priority. So when I reach out to the girls to see when are we scheduling this, when are we scheduling that, I work with just those two daughters for the most part. And then we communicate to the family from there. Um, But we check in and make sure there's nothing going on with anyone. And so we have a cookie baking day that was scheduled. That that date was finalized in September. And it is for Sunday, December 8th. And we do a whole entire dinner. We spend the day together. Usually, you know, the Lions are typically playing at 1 p.m. So we may try to you know, have it start at one or depending on now we have naps to work around. I think we're scheduled to get together between 2.30 and 3. So it'll probably be like a little halftime thing where, because Bobby's not going to step away from that TV very long if the Lions are playing. He's just not going to. So he'll, I'm sure that he'll be like, as soon as halftime hits, we're on the road to get to your mom and dad's because I want to be there before third quarter starts. But, um, That's an annual tradition, and that is just a beautiful day. I have matching aprons for everyone. I have a whole tub of everything that we use. That doesn't happen by chance. That that comes with, again, communication. That comes with putting in a lot of work. That's a lot of work. I'm the host, and, um, you know, we, we discuss what the meal is going to be, what the desserts are going to be, who's making what. We go through and assess... Um, everything that we have, what do we need, who's picking this up, who's picking that up. It's, It's very well put together, and that happens by making it happen. Now, the other thing sometimes I'll hear, well, yeah, but you have daughters. I can't even imagine that comment. That does, that would not even register with me because I would never have that limited belief. That is a limited belief, and it's limiting you if you have that. You make it happen. That's on you. If you're sitting back because that's your limited belief, maybe that's what you heard growing up. I know my husband came from a family of four boys, and he grew up with his mom always telling those kids, girls stay close to their parents, boys don't. Well, can you imagine telling your kid? Then they're not going to be close to you if that's, if that's the rules. You know, you don't want to say that to your kids because they're going to think, okay, I guess I need to pull away because this isn't what we do. Thankfully, that's not the case, but that's because I've enforced the closeness that we have. And we see Paul's family more than we see my family. We do more with them. Um, but these things don't happen by chance. If you have sons, don't limit yourself that way. I couldn't imagine. McKenna is not going to ever have this mindset, like Mac is not going to be close to me. No, she's going to make that happen. And then you have to be willing to welcome in. If they marry, and most often they do, you have to be open to welcoming them in and making that daughter-in-law part of your world. I see this happen. I, I have some relatives um, that have sons, and they are extremely close to their son and daughter-in-law, and, in, and they also have a daughter. In fact, my one cousin, she does like an annual girls trip with her daughter and her daughter-in-law. I mean, she, you're, you're no different. I don't treat you any different. Um, my, my sons-in-laws are mine. Like they're my kids. They're my kids. Like I love and adore them. They're my world, just like my girls are. That happens because you make it happen. So don't limit yourself. Don't use these excuses. No one feels sorry for you that you're not showing up in your son's life because you got all your 
rule things or what you heard or, you know, perceptions, assumptions, all these things, it's up to you to make it happen. Be a communicator. It starts right there. You better believe if I had sons and not daughters, I would have not been sitting back. <laughs> no, I'd be making things happen. I'd be cultivating those relationships. I would put that on me, not on them. I would cultivate those relationships. The other thing is you better be fun. You better be fun when they're little. You better be fun in the years that they don't even like really like you. <laughs> Still be fun. Still have fun. And you better be fun later on. Because they aren't going to want to be with you if all you do is complain, whine, and guilt trip them. Oh, it's amazing the guilt tripping. The guilt tripping that parents do with their adult children. No one's going to want to be with you. And that's on you, not on them. Bye. And when your kids come home, <laughs> you send them back to their home with toilet paper and paper towel and food. So what are you going to do? Just pour some ice in there? Food, food, yeah. food. Right. Or I have like a little on the lunch I am meal prepping my eggs. It don't matter to me. For a couple of days. How much stuff you got? Easier. Let me grab that one. Yeah, let's see what size it is. Yep, send them home. You gotta love them. Send them home with whatever they need. <laughs> Take care of those out of state kids. That is if they drive home. Not if they fly, but if they drive home. I am just now doing my workout. I ended up doing household things before Carly got up. Um, because when she texted me and said she was going to sleep an extra hour and get up at seven, I don't like to be stopped in the middle of my workout. Um, and if you are, if you train hard and you know how training works, you know that typically you don't, you you you, you don't do that <laughs> unless you're like literally doing a split workout. Um, that's the beauty of working out from home. You don't have to worry about anyone coming up and talking to you and carrying on a conversation with you when you really need to be keeping that, you need to get your workout done before you, you step away like that. So I decided to do housework until she got up and then spend some time chatting with her and saying my goodbyes. I'll share a little something about me, and some of you may be able to relate to this. Um, I am not a fan of when my kids travel um, by car and they have like an all-day traveling. I feel not anxiety um, because worry and fear just leave us in despair and it's counterproductive. We cannot control anything that happens in this world, right? But... I feel like I am just constantly looking at where my child is. <laughs> you know, we, we have our, each other's locations. Um, I even have my, my mom's location. I, I highly recommend that if you have elderly parents that you are set up to, to track their location. Um, but anyway, I, I've already been, I've already looked up Carly's location three times and she's been on the road maybe 
just over an hour. <laughs> Maybe an hour and 30 minutes. And I just feel like that. I just, it's like, stop it, Tracy. Stop it. <laughs> um, I don't do that when they're traveling by plane because I can't see their location. Um, uh, when they're in the air, unless it's like international, I'm constantly just like, like when Haley travels, you know, I'm always like, there she is. You just know she's over the pond somewhere and hopefully not in the pond. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to be glued to find my loved one, find my daughter all day, just watching her, um, location, but just a little something about me, and I'm sure some of you um, some of you can relate. Going back to elderly parents, I remember one time I checked my mom's location, and I, she was at the hospital. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, no. I called her, and I said, Mom, you're at the hospital. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Ah, yeah. So, yes, please, please take that as um, a little tip to have your um, elderly parents' locations um, and, and just, you know, explain to them it's, it's not, you know, it's because I care about you and it, it's, it's good. It's, it's a good thing, Mom, Dad. It's a good thing. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Feel free to weigh in on any thoughts that you have if you're in the season of grandparenting or many, maybe some takeaways that you have. If you have adult children and grandchildren that live out of state or nowhere near proximity to where you live, please share some little tips and tricks that you've incorporated to make grandparenting from a distance work for you. Don't forget if you're interested in taking the Parenting Workshop, which is a two-part series with video one coming out on the first day of the new year, New Year's Day, January 1st, 2025, and the second round being a live Q&A that following Sunday on January 5th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. There's a link in the description box below to get more information and so that you can get registered. Thanks for being here. Have a great day.